It's moments like right now, I'm being reminded of David. That even when we look into David's life, we can see that David was anointed to be a king at a young age. That David was out in the fields and he was he was tending to the sheep. And I'm reminded that even in his early age that David slayed Goliath. I'm reminded that even after that, that David still served this king with respect and honor. But then I'm also reminded that David even found himself in a cave all by himself with just him and God. We get some of the amazing songs and when we look at when David was in the cave all by himself, conversations with just him and God. We can see David emotional roller coaster. We can see David one minute he began to praise God. We were in one moment that David began to even question God, are you even here? But it was in that moment when it was just him and God that David fired was relent to run after the very thing that God has called him to do. I don't know who's in here right now. Maybe you're in a season of your life right now where you're questioning if the flame still lit to run after the very thing that you have called me to do, God. God, I'm giving everything that I got. One blow after another blow. How many pivots can I have, God? How is the one that serves you takes the most blows? How is the one that gives their life to you, God? It seems that's the one who walks with heaviness. That's the one where anxiety goes, everyone. That's the one where depression meets you at the door. That's the one where you're questioning, should I live or should I just throw my hands up? Why is the one that's been redeemed has the heavy heart, God? in that cave all by himself where he had no choice but to sit and hear the voice of God. Let God speak to you today. Let God minister to you today. Let God begin to speak at the very fear that's been intimidating you for all of these years, been poking at you, been telling you you're not the one, been telling you that you can't do it, been questioning you. You're questioning yourself now. Intimidation is rising in your anxiety. Fear is looking you at you every single day, and God is standing right here whispering to you, I'm still with you. I'm still right here. I know it looks like defeat. I know you're questioning, is it my past? Is it my mistakes? Did I make the wrong choice? And God is saying, I'm still right here. I'm still right here. Heavenly Father, we love you. We honor you. We receive your presence on today, Lord God. There's nothing greater than your presence. Speak to us today, Lord. Begin to minister to us right where we're hurting at, right where we feel the pressure at, right where we're feeling as we can't take another step, but we believe your word says that all things are possible to them who believe. So touch our faith right now. Increase our belief right now. We rest on you. We lean on you. Guide each and every step. Let us know that you never will leave us. Let us know that you will never forsake us. Let us know that your presence is here. Lift up our heads today as we worship you on today, Lord God. We worship you in this place. Glorify your name have your Bibles, go ahead and turn to 1 Kings chapter 17, verses 1 through 13. I'm ready to preach, family. 
I'm ready to, I'm ready to punch the devil right in the face. Come on, you got my back today, family? Come on. Can you talk back to me today? Come on. Talk back to me today, because God is speaking. And speaking all week. He speaks every week. But I can feel his presence even more right now. First Kings chapter 17, verses 1 through 13. And it reads, it says, Now in Elijah, who was from Tishbish in Gilead, told King Ahab, As surely as the Lord, the God of Israel, lives, the God I serve, there will be no dew or rain during the next few years until I give the word. Then the Lord said to Elijah, go to the east and hide by Karif Brook, near where it enters the Jordan River. Drink from the brook and eat what the ravens bring you, for I have commanded them to bring you food. So Elijah did as the Lord told him and camped beside Karif Brook, east of the Jordan. The ravens brought him bread and meat each morning and evening, and he drank from the brook. But after a while, the brook dried up, for there was no rainfall anywhere in the land. Then the Lord said to Elijah, go and live in the village of Sarephath, near the city of Sidon. I have instructed a widow there to feed you. So he went to Zarephath. As he arrived at the gates of the village, he saw a widow gathering sticks. And he asked her, would you please bring me a little water in a cup. Somebody say little. As she was going to eat, he called to her, bring me a bite of bread too. But, he, but she said, I swear by the Lord your God that I don't have a single piece of bread in the house. And I only have a handful of flour left in the jar. And a little, somebody say little. And a little cooking oil in the bottom of the jug. I was just gathering a few sticks to cook this last meal. And then my son and I would die. Close right here in 13. But Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Come on, tell yourself that today. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. I want to preach from this subject today, family. If you're taking notes, write this in your, in your message. Help. I'm drowning in my fears. Amen. Amen. Say it again. Amen. Amen. You guys can go ahead and have your seats. Amen. Going to go ahead and dismiss seat kids. Come on, in middle school and high school, if you're not already in the hallway, your wonderful leaders are definitely over there. How you guys feel? You feeling good? Come on, can we just put our hands together for worship? Just an amazing time in worship. And right before we transition and move further into the message, I do want to drip a little bit of announcement. Come on, somebody say next Sunday. Come on, telling you, look at your neighbor and say, next Sunday. Next Sunday, you want to be here, family. We have an amazing announcement to share with you guys. I'm telling you, I'm going to drip a little bit, but I can't drip too much because I don't want to get in trouble by the staff. But you want to be here on next Sunday. I'm telling you, we all know that God has been moving through this church this entire year, and we have some fantastic news to share with you guys. The team has been working hard behind the scenes, and I'm telling you, God is taking us somewhere. God is with us, but God is taking us somewhere where and he's getting ready to do some amazing things and you got to be here next Sunday and I'm gonna just leave it right there because I want to say it right now and that's just going to ruin the surprise so even at the service don't ask me matter of fact I'm gonna just go hide because I know I can't keep a secret and I'm going to tell it so be here next Sunday it's going to be phenomenal family 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 there are so many phobias in life I know this because I actually had to turn in a research paper because my teacher, Princeton, my six-year-old, asked so many questions, and he had me Googling all of these phobias that's in life. There's so many phobias. Matter of fact, you know, Google, because that's where a, a lot of us go for our doctor degree research paper. We go to Google, and Google said in the top 20, top, top 2022, the top phobias, and I'm going to give you the top four right now. The first one is acronophobia, the fear of spiders. 
Come on, and fear spiders. Come on, I don't want to see any spiders in my house. Come on, anybody, anybody scared of spiders in here? I, I don't want, I know, come on, I know you're scared of spiders. But another one is ophidiophobia, the fear of snakes. Fear of snakes. Matter of fact, come on, matter of fact, Brenda, come on, we, we found a, a lizard in our basement last week. Come on. I'm telling you right now, I don't know if it was prophetic or not, family, but we stomped. Matter of fact, Brenda caught it. She put the, the cup over it. Then I came, I grabbed a shovel, and I snapped his head off. I don't, I don't know how prophetic that is, but I, I just got reminded of Jesus stepping on the head of the enemy. Don't you live in my house? Me and my wife and the family, we will serve the Lord. <laughs> Another phobia is acrophobia. It's the fair heights. So some people can't fly because we are, we're actually afraid of heights. And another phobia would be, um, this one is kind of popular because of the pandemic. It is mysophobia, fear germs. You're in the airport, man. Brenda was in the airport. We the only ones with a mask on because Brenda is afraid of germs. I'm like, I don't need no uh, face mask, babe. I'm covered by the blood. I don't need any face mask. She said, put your face mask on right now. <laughs> and you know what I did. What did I do? I put my face mask on. <laughs> but family, a lot of us may not have or may resemble with those phobias, but I do even through prayer, what I think a lot of us actually have common interest in is one fear and that's the fear of running out. Running out of time. Running out of patience. Running out of options and resources. You may not be afraid of snakes and spiders and heights, but what is one thing that we could have common interest in is that, Lord God, am I running out of what I have right in front of me? See, we can be in a season of our life and we can see God's hand move through our life, but we begin to look at the very thing that's in our life and begin to say, God, if you don't show up, the very thing that's blessing me can actually become to an end. I'm afraid that I'm running out of time. Running out of time. God, when is, when is I'm going to get that career job? I'm running out of Running out of time, God. When is going to be my season to get married? I'm, run, I'm running out of time, God. When is, I, I don't have no more options. I'm running out of resources. How do I parent my children in the society of that? They're growing up, Lord God. They're surrounded by things. I'm running out of options, even how to be a husband or a wife. What do I supposed to do? I'm running out of love. Anybody ever been in a season where you're feeling though you're running out of? The very thing that's in front of you, I'm running, out of, I'm running out of strength. But the more I walk with God, I come to find out this, that God will actually lead you into seasons where you have to depend on him because you're running out. That it's, it's not just the enemy that's all the time, that's snatching of everything that, that God has placed in our life. Sometimes God will actually lead you into the valley. Sometimes God will lead you right into a cave where you're dealing with little, where you're dealing with running out, where you're dealing with just enough. And God has you right in a place where you have to lean on him because of the limitations that's in your life. Sometimes God will lead you into a season of being reduced. Reduce when people leave you. Reduce when resources dry up. Reduce when you don't have any options. Reduce when you don't have any help, anybody else to come around. Is anybody in here today that knows what it means to be in a season where you had a whole lot going on, but God began to shift some things and God began to move some things and now you find yourself here all by yourself and God is saying, I got you right where I want you. Have you ever been in a season where things felt ridiculous? Reduced. Things begin to dry up. I just wonder, family, I just won this celebration. What is your response when God leads you into a season of dealing with little? Do we still praise him when there's little? Do we still rejoice when there's little? Or do we find ourselves, we have to be honest, because if I be honest sometimes, I begin to question God. God, why are you leading me into a season of little? 
my faith begins to question. My faith sometimes begins to waver. And we have to make sure, family, hear my heart on today, to stand firm on the things that God has called you to because just because it's little doesn't mean that God is absent. Just because it's little, it means that he's sovereign, that he's still right here, that he is the well that you have to run to each and every day of your life. All these other resources will begin to dry up, but your heavenly Father, come on, church, is still right here. to feed you day and night, to be with you right in the darkness right when you're by yourself right on your job when you're walking when you're driving in a car and you have nobody around you you're questioning what's going on and I'm telling you right now family God can have you right where he wants you to be don't judge God's proximity based on what's in your life because if you begin to continue to look through things through your natural eyes, you will miss what God is doing in your life right now. God can have you right where you want. I just, I just believe this, Julius. God loves to deal with little. God loves to move in little. God is so interested in an underdog story, Marquise. That he's always looking for people that's been overlooked. That he's always looking for people who's been rejected. That he's always looking for people who had some blows after another blow. God begins to take you through fires so that he can see that can he trust you because he's purging out of some things that has been on you, but he's sending you through a fire because he's getting ready to send you somewhere. If there's anybody in here that can stay in the fire with God because God is sending you somewhere, don't resist the temptation of what God is doing right now because he's got you right where you need to be. Stand firm in a fire because you're not by yourself. Stand firm in a fire because there's another person with you. Stand firm in a fire and allow what God wants to do with you in a season of little, little. I don't know what my next step is, though, God, because I have little. Elijah was in a season of dealing with little. See, my first point is, write this down, fear not, because our God is a protector and a God and a provider. See, see, Elijah here, I'm going to read in the verse 2, it says, Then the Lord said to Elijah, go to the east and hide by the brook near where it enters the Jordan River. He says, drink from the brook and eat what the raven bring you. See, God told him because King Ahab was actually angry at Elijah because through Elijah's word, that brought a drought on the land. And God actually protected Elijah and he told him, he said, hey, go by the brook. I know the place is getting ready to dry up, but I have a river where you can, where you can lay beside. I have a place where you can go. So when persecution hit the land, come on, somebody. When a drought hit your life, come on, somebody. God will always lead you beside still water to feed you and give you something to drink. Just because other everybody else is experiencing a drought, God can still move in your life. It's why I love it when it says in Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pasture. He leads me beside still waters. In a season of your life, even in this society, when people around you, resources is drying up, God still has all sovereign wisdom to lead you into a place where nobody else knows that that river is still pumping. Come on, somebody. That nobody else knows that you can still drink from this river. That nobody knows that you can still, this is still an available option. And here's the wisdom that I'm sharing with you on today because your fears can say this, that there is no other option. That there is no other river. That there is no other resource. That this story that's in your life is getting ready to come to an end. But I'm so glad that God stays firm to his word and he said he will always lead you beside a still water. When in, other, in other words, a still water means that God will always feed you in every season of your life. Regardless if you're down in a valley, God river runs down to the deepest valley. 
And even if you find yourself on a mountaintop, and a lot of times people say when you climb that mountain, it actually can get a little bit lonely. When you climb that mountain, you can actually feel like you're by yourself. When you climb that mountain, a success, and all I'm telling you here, God will meet you there, and God will meet you right there. And then on the way in between, God is walking with you. On the way in between, God is leading you. On the way in between, God is feeding you day and night. God is with you. God is a protector. He provides because he leads Elijah to this. He leads Elijah to this brook. But what I love about this leader is that that he commands the raven to feed him. See, the beautiful thing about this Marquise is that the raven is unclean. That the raven is an uncommon blessing that's getting ready to come in Elijah's life. That Elijah would never look to a raven to feed him in time of desperation. And what I'm all telling you right now, receive the prophetic word of the Lord. You need to start looking for some ravens that come into your life and begin to feed you. Because God is telling you, he's been telling me this all week. Anthony, start looking for the ravens. Start looking for the uncommon blessings. Start looking for God to bring some uncommon blessings in your life. Could it be that Elijah could have easily looked to the other direction for God to move in his life, but miss how God wanted to feed him? In this season, sometimes, Leah, we miss how God wants to feed us in a season a little. Because we're looking for God to feed us in a common way. We're looking for God to continue to bless us in a common way. That you did it this way, God, so I know you have to do it that way. That you, when you did it last time, God, you did it that way. And now we begin to put an all-sovereign God in a box. We begin to box God in and say, God, you can only move that way. God, you can only bless my marriage that way. God, you can only redeem my story that way. And now we miss how God wants to feed us in a season a little because we miss the ravens that's coming in our life. And God is sending some uncommon blessings and God is sending some uncommon people and God is sending some uncommon resources and you got to stop batting your eye when a raven comes in your life because it could be the supernatural blessing of God wants to do in your life. Begin to open up your palm and receive an uncommon blessing. Do an uncommon blessing in my life, God. Do an uncommon blessing in my marriage. Do an uncommon blessing in this church. Let us always be in position to receive how God wants to bless us in a season of little. You can go from little to much more if we stop missing the uncommon blessing. We, we stay in seasons too long because we box God in and say, God, you can only move this way. God, you can only heal me this way. God, you can only bring that resource this way, and hear the heart of what God is saying. I'm looking to take you from little to more, but it's going to come uncommon. It's going to come uncommon. Look for the ravens to feed you this way. See, it reminds me about the bread. See, God fed Israelites with manna, uncommon. Matter of fact, when we think of bread, Jesus is what? The bread of life. He's, he's the everyday living bread. The bread is always here. And here's what God has been telling me even right now. You got to start looking for the bread to come in your life. God send them bread through the raven. God send them bread even through the through, through, through your spirit. God send the bread. The bread is on its way. He has sent bread through manna, and that manna was day and night. And even in his life right now, through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, hear the blessing of the Lord. Your bread is present right now. The thing that needs to feed you in this season so that anxiety doesn't continue to rise up is for us to eat the right bread. Because foolish bread will try to show itself. False bread will try to rise up in this season and say, this is how you get what you need to get in order to stay strong, in order to move into everything that God has called you to. Don't be fooled by foolish bread in this season. But be so entangled into his spirit that when the uncommon bread comes your way, you can still see that God's hand, my gosh, is on it. That God is still covering it. 
and the very thing that's getting ready to give you nutrients so that you can go and do the very thing that God has called you to do. You can receive it because you know God's hand is on it. See, I love it that, that the raven fed him in little. But, but here's the, if I can teach it a little bit, because here's the interesting thing with Elijah, that the raven fed him day and night, but also the brook was drying up. See, he's getting fed miraculously by a bird, a common bird, but he has to be, but he has to be, reality has to set in because he's going to this brook every day and he can see that it's getting low. Even though the bird is feeding him and he's surviving, but he knows he's not thriving because the brook is going low and low. So after, after another day, after another week, after another month of the bread feeding you, you got to get into a place, Elijah is saying, is this thriving or is this surviving? See, have you ever been in a season for so long where you know you're not thriving, you're just surviving? That you know that eventually this brook is going to run out. I see the miraculous, God. I see what you're doing. But if I could be a little bit honest, God, I know this brook is getting low. I measured it on past week. It was here. And then on this week, it's here. And then on this week, it's here. I'm at a point where I'm not thriving, God. I'm just surviving. You ever been in a season for so long where you're just trying to survive? Surviving with my, my money. Surviving with my, my strength. Surviving with my patience. If I can be honest, God, if I measure my patience on a, a month ago, God, it's a little bit low. I, I thank you for covering me and I, I thank you for, 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 for blessing me. But God, if I can have an honest conversation, come on, somebody. It's a little bit lower right now, God. I see the uncommon blessing me, but I also see my love running low. My thoughts are running low. My mental space, come on, somebody, it's running low. I'm, I'm hanging in there, God. I'm, I'm grateful for the raven, but also my mental space is running low. The brook is running low, and all I'm telling you that God has you right where he wants you. But just as God leads us to more, he also leads us to little with our assignment. See, see, a lot of times we can easily preach this, that God leads us from more, little to more. But the more I look at some people's stories throughout the Bible, sometimes they didn't go from little to more. They went from little to little. See, when I studied the scriptures a little bit more, it wasn't that Elijah went from little and then he found himself right on a mountain where he was prophesying and, and fire fell on those 450 false prophets. That would have been a, a beautiful story. But matter of fact, he didn't go from little to great. He actually went from little to little. He, he went from little to little. Let me prove it to you right now because if you're taking notes, point number two, fear not. Because our God is a guider. Verse 8 says this, Then the Lord said to Elijah, Go and live in a village of Zarephath, near the city of Sidon. I have instructed a widow there to feed you. The brook dries up. God sends him to another city. Could it be that sometimes closed doors is not God's rejection? But actually a closed door is God's protection and direction. That sometimes we can look at closed doors as this is the enemy harming us. This is the enemy that's stopping us. And a lot of times that may be true, but in this instance right here, and maybe it's for you as well, when a closed door comes in your life and God's hand is on you. Come on, somebody. God is not rejecting you. God is protecting you. And God is actually directing you to something even better, to something that's even greater. But it's just not going to bless you. Come on. It's getting ready to bless somebody else. If I can teach this a little bit, a little bit better because I want you to catch it, family. I want you to catch it because here is Elijah by the brook. The brook dries up. He sends Elijah to a widow. What if Elijah would have just stayed by the miraculous brook that just kept on flowing? What if the brook never dried up? 
What if God would have just kept the brook flowing with enough water so Elijah can survive? Elijah would have never ran into your widow. Elijah would have never saved his family from starvation. This family would have died. This son would have died. Elijah would have never had a moment with the family. And matter of fact, if I could teach her a little bit more, because even where the widow was, the widow lived in the heart of the city, right in the middle, where the prophets, the false prophets about ab- ab- were, right in the center of it. If Elijah stays by the brook, he never gets close enough to the false prophets and he never has his moment up on a mountain calling down fire and saying, God, rain right now, Sean, and he defeated the false prophet. None of this would have happened because Elijah would have stayed comfortable sitting by the brook. God, you're doing it for me. I can just stay right here the rest of my life. God, I have enough. God, you're doing it. I can just stay right here. This is comfortable. I'm good, God. I have enough. I see you moving. But sometimes God will dry up one thing so that he can move you to another thing. Sometimes God can dry up one thing so he can move you to the next assignment. See, don't just miss when something's drying up. It could be that God is sending you to something else. See, here's the beautiful thing about this picture, though, because, like I said, Elijah goes from little to little. This is a widow. This is a widow who, who's dealing with little. Matter of fact, we'll talk a little bit more about this next week. If God doesn't change the sermon, he'll do that. He, I'm finding out more. He'll change the whole sermon prep plan up. Did it today. <laughs> and, 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 and here's the beautiful thing, because he, he goes from little to little. She has little. She, 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 she doesn't have a whole lot right now. And God takes her and, I mean, God takes him and moves him to, to, to even to little right now. And God directed Elijah from the brook and he de, um, directed Elijah to the widow. Point number three, as I get ready to close out, Marquise and the team can come back in. Watch this, watch this. Point number three, if you're taking notes, fear not, our God can do it again. Fear not, our God can do it again. So watch this, watch this. Elijah tells the widow to not fear because God has this. He goes in verse 13, he said, but Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. She told Elijah, I just have a little bit of oil. I just have a little bit of flour. Matter of fact, we're not thriving right now, man of God. We're just trying to survive. What we have in one season is coming to an end. She was preparing for death. She was down to her last meal. She was down to her last strength. She was down to her last resource. She was down to her last option. And now she said, I'm just preparing for death. You ever been in a a season of your life when there's one area you just... We gave it everything that we got, God. I'm just preparing for this to end. Crash. Do it quick, God. I'm running out. This is the heart of the widow. This is what the widow's going to. Maybe that's where you can be right now in your mental space of fear. You've been fighting so long. The enemy's been intimidating you for so long that you're just down to your last positive thought. God, I don't have another positive thought. God, I don't know another scripture I can read. God, I don't know what else to, what what more can I do, Lord God? I'm down to little. God drives up a brook so that a man of God can go visit a widow who was on her last strength. See, sometimes we can, we can easily get caught up 
in rejected doors, not knowing God is rejecting one thing so that he can lead you to another thing that's getting ready to bless somebody else. This is why you got to love what God is moving in your story. Just because your story ended right here, it could be that God is moving you in a direction because your story is getting to bless somebody else. Your story is getting ready to help somebody else. Your story is getting ready to let somebody else know who's on a last thought, who's on a last resource, who's on a last, what can God do for me? And here's what Elijah is telling her. Don't be afraid. I know how you feel. I know what you're going through. Matter of fact, if I can tell you my story, I saw some ravens come my way. You ever tell your story to somebody else and it just sounds foolish while it's coming out of your mouth, can you? Can you imagine what Elijah was telling this woman while she's on her deathbed? Ravens fed me, I'm dying. Ravens came my way, I'm dying. Sometimes your words to people can sound foolish to you and foolish to them, but God is working right in the mix of it. Because now Elijah is telling her, don't be afraid because I've seen him move. I've seen him move. I, I know what it means to be on your last thought, but guess what? He can do it again. He can do it again. He can do it again. I'm telling you, if he did it back then, he can do it right now. And if he, if he touched your mind back then, he can touch your mind again. If he blessed your resources back then, he can do it again. I don't know, whatever you're going through right now, and maybe you're feeling that, that you're at a rejected door, hear what God is wanting you to know. I did it back then, and I'm getting ready to do it again. God is saying, I will touch your mind each day of your life if it's me for you to get how much I need you, how much I love you, how much I care for you. I'll rise you up in each day and I'll touch your mind on Monday and I'll rise you up again and I'll touch your mind on Wednesday. God doesn't run out of opportunities or he doesn't get tired of touching your mind each and every day because he's so obsessed on how much he loves you and how much he cares for you. If he needs to touch you each and every day, he'll touch you. If he needs to speak to you each and every day, he'll speak to you. If you're walking through a season of darkness and you're judging and you're condemning yourself, hear what God is saying. I still love you and I'll speak to you every day. Doesn't matter where you are right now. Doesn't matter if you feel rejected. It doesn't matter if Goliath's giants are coming your way every day and you're feeling like you're getting ready to get, give up and you're feeling like you're going to get ready to quit and you're feeling like I don't have another thought to throw this way at this battle anymore. And I'm just here to tell you as a friend, as a brother and as a pastor, God still loves you. God still cares for you. That God's grace is still here. And as we get ready to close, we can stand to our feet. Here's what God is telling me even right now. It's time to release your voice. That it's time to release your prophetic voice in this season. It's time to silence the fears that's been speaking to you way too long. You've been silent way too long. You've been quiet way too long. You've been allowing the enemy, the fears of intimidation, to speak to you and raise his voice way too long. Here's what God is saying. It's time to release your voice. It's time to, to say with your chest, open up your mouth and begin to declare what God has been telling you. To declare that my family is blessed. To declare that no more strongholds will hold us back. To declare that his word said that he will bless us in the city.
He will bless us coming and going. That he will cover us. That he will always be with us. It's time to declare what God has been speaking over your marriage. That your marriage is a ministry. That your marriage will go help and bless people. That your marriage is getting ready to move in a powerful way. Even for all of our singles in here, your singleness is a blessing. Your singleness is a gift. That the way that you walk, the way that you carry yourself, the way that you be a resemblance on how God is with you. That he is the Lord of your life life. Now allow the enemy to speak another fear in your life. Begin to release your voice and declare what God is saying to you right now. My kids are blessed. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. We're going to go back into worship, but I'm telling you, this is the prophetic word of the Lord. You've been quiet too long and God is saying, release your voice. You're waiting for the worship team to release it for you. You're waiting for the pastor to release it for you. You're waiting for another preacher that's on social media to release it for you. And here's what God is saying. I'm waiting on you. Release your word. Release the very thing that I have placed inside of you. Nobody else can release it but you. So when you're feeling isolated on Wednesday, release it. When you're by yourself on a Friday driving into work, release it. Keep saying it. When you're feeling like you're getting ready to give up, when you're feeling that you're on your last thought, hear me. Release it. Release it. Release it. Release this. Psalms 34, verse 4. I sought the Lord and he answered me. And he delivered me from all of my fears. Somebody say all of my fears. Oh, not just one. Come on, somebody. Not just one, not just a couple, but each and every one that comes and shows itself. God said, I give you strength to have access over all of my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces shall never be ashamed. Psalms 27, as we get ready to close. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. And whom shall I be afraid? Come on, somebody. Deuteronomy 3, 22 says it this way. You shall, you shall not fear them, for it is the Lord your God who fights for you. And all I'm telling you, you have a Father that's in heaven who sent this Holy Spirit not to just comfort you, but to do battle for you. Not to just sit there and give you massages on your temple, but the Holy Spirit is here to fight for you to protect you, to give you dominion, to give you access. Your Lord is fighting for you right now. Fighting right here in the mental space of your mind. Where you're feeling defeated, I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit is battling on your behalf. On your behalf. On your behalf. On your behalf, that's how much he loves you. Come on, get personal with that thing. God sees you. He knows your name. You are one. You're not caught in a multitude. You're just not a number on a chart. When God sees you, he sees the one, and his mind is on you, and he's battling for you each and every day of your life. When you feel disgusting, come on, somebody. He's still battling for you. When you're feeling a condemned, he's still battling for you because his word said it this way. He didn't come to condemn the world, but he came to save you and you and you and you and you. He comes to save who which is lost. So if you're feeling lost, I'm just here to tell you that he still loves you. He's not condemning you, but he's releasing grace on you today. Second Timothy 1 and 7 says it this way. For God has not given us a spirit of fear power, love, sound judgment. When translation says sound mind, I don't have to walk in fear no more. I don't have to walk in fear no more. Even when I, I don't know that I can do it. Come on, somebody, touch your mind right now. I don't have to walk or listen to that giant no more. Matter of fact, I declare that you're not even a giant right now. 
I don't even label you that. You are not even a giant in my life. Come on, somebody. You're not a giant in my life. I don't have to fear you no more. Mind be redeemed right now. Touch my mind. Give me new thoughts. Uproot the old thoughts. Uproot the old labels. Touch my mind. Give me your word. Give me your thoughts. Give me your ways. Begin to see myself as you see me, Lord God. Touch my mind right now so that fears don't intimidate me anymore. Touch my mind right now so that fears won't block how I see myself. Touch my mind right now, God, so I can see. I want want to see better. I want to see higher. I want to see clearer. I want to see brighter. I want to see that the greater is present right here in my life. Touch my mind. Touch my mind. As I close out, it's not part of the note, so it won't be on on the screen. But number 624 says it this way. A lot of times we just use it as the benediction, like it's a cue, like class dismissed. Let me go get some brunch. That's, that's the mark of service is ending. But it's not a mark that service is ending. It's a confirmation, an affirmation that his hand is on you. So this season of your life, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine his face upon you and be gracious to you. And may he lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. My God, my God. My God, I'm feeling it. I'm sorry, guys. Deuteronomy 28, and all of these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you if you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in a city, and blessed shall you be in a field. Blessed shall you be in the fruit of your womb, and the fruit of your ground, and the fruit of your cattle, the increase of your herds, and the young of your flock. Blessed shall be your basket and your netting bow. Blessed shall be when you're coming, and blessed shall be when you go out. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise up against you to be defeated before you. Wherever I go, I'm blessed. Wherever God takes me, I'm blessed. Wherever you send me, God, I'm blessed. Even if I find myself beside a brook that's getting dried up, I'm still blessed. And even you send me to another city and that woman is dealing with little, I'm still blessed. And if I'm out on a mountain, I'm still blessed. Wherever you want to send me, send me, God. Give me you. I'm giving you my yes because I know if your hand is on me, I'm blessed. Lord, don't take your hand off of me. I just say yes. Just say yes right now. Just say yes. Oh, just say yes. Just say yes. Come on, God, yes. I give you my yes. And and, and when I don't understand it, I give you my yes. When I'm running in little, I give you my yes. When I'm feeling like I'm at a place with just enough, I say yes. When I'm at a rejected door, I say yes. When I'm down to my legs, I say yes. Heavenly Father, we love you. We honor you. We thank you that you can take little and do much with. We thank you that you are a multiplier, God. We thank you that even right now you can take the bread, the fish, and multiply. That you can take little and feed thousands. Take little and feed all of my thoughts right now. Take little and feed my family. Take little and feed my health. Take little and feed my strength. Come on, just ask him, ask him to feed you right now. He's feeding you right now. He's feeding you right now. Whatever you need, whatever you're running empty on, begin to open up your mouth and say, God, feed me. Feed me, God. Take the little right now and multiply it. Feed it. It's not running low when God's hand is on it. Feed us. Feed us right now. Feed us right now, Lord God. If that's you, just begin to stretch your hands up. Just begin to stretch your hands up. And 
and receive what God is saying. Feed us right now, Heavenly Father. Bless us as we're going and bless us as we go out. It is in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody say amen.